So now we're going to talk about one of the biggest elements and topics of hip hop, which is the low end and the bass. In this track, the 808 is essentially just playing the root note of the chords from the sample. Next most important thing is the syncopation between the drums and the bass. And, like, and that's just, to me, that's music 101. It's like, whether you have a band, whatever it is, you know, you got to have that syncopation between the bass and the drummer. Again, I wanted to, we wanted to keep this one a bit more laid back. So we just went with a simple um, kind of straightforward 808 bass, you know, just following what the guitars were doing. So let's talk about the relationship of the kick and the 808, which are the two main instruments occupying the low end of this mix. And let's talk about how we're able to make them sit well together by choosing the right sounds that complement each other. Let's take a listen to the kick drum. So that's kind of hollow but the hollowness of it also gives you a little bit of that punch. That's also the reason why we use the 808. You know, instead of trying to squeeze a, a bunch of sub out of a hollow kick, just use the 808 to fill in the missing space. And so t tell me a little bit about that, actually, because that brings up an interesting point. When you're pairing your 808s and your kicks, mm -hmm. um, how do you do that and how do you, what are you thinking about? Like I said, I, I generally start with my drums, meaning like my kick and my snare before I start with the with any of the low-end frequencies. Um, so... It really depends on what, what my vision for the record is, but generally, going back to what I said about trying to find the right sound for, or the right drums for a sample or for a music idea, I kind of have to have the foresight to say, okay, well, what happens after that? Am I going for a super saturated, distorted 808? Am I going for a live bass sound? Because you're gonna treat both of those basses differently, so you kind of have to treat your kick differently. So this is very interesting and a great tip. Even when you're adding kick and drums, you're already thinking about what the bass is going to be like and how it's all going to work together. So if you're following along with this process and applying it to your own creative workflow, spend some time thinking about the overall vision for the track at each step of the way. This will help you to make sure that you're picking sounds that go well together and will make sure that the entire track is more cohesive. Let's talk about the different types of basses. There's essentially two main types of basses found in hip hop. There's live bass, which is usually an electric bass, and there's 808s. Now, of course, you can use other types of instruments for the low end, but typically they can fall into one of these two categories, live bass instruments and 808s. So let's talk about how we could treat each of these. In a case where I think I'm gonna be using a very big saturated 808, you know, or a very uh, fattened 808, I kind of have to be sure that when I'm EQing my kick, when I'm choosing my kick, it can't be one that has too many sub-frequencies in it already. Because then what happens is that they start to turn to mush. When you put the 808 and that kick together, the bottom end turns to mush. You know what I mean? So a lot of times it's determined by, you know, the kick I'm using is it's determined by what kind of bass I think I want to use. If I think I'm using a live bass, what happens is with a live bass, if you try to squeeze too much sub out of that, it starts to feel sloppy. You know, it starts to feel uh, a little too sluggish and wobbly on the bottom end. So in that case, the kick might carry a lot of the sub frequencies and the bass is more so there for melody than for drive. Ah, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's interesting. So, so just to recap, basically, your your either your kick or your 808 is going to have the sub in it. Right. And if it's the kick, then your bass you're going to kind of take out some of those subs. You might use a live bass. Right. Um, or if uh, if your 808 or your bass is going to have your sub in it, right. then your kick's not really going to have the kick's much. not going to have the, at yeah. that point. Then the kick is there more so for the punch mm -hmm. than anything else. Um, you know, so it, you kind of have to have a little foresight when it comes to this. Now, don't get me wrong, you could just throw things at the wall and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not you know the best you know the, the, some of the best music of our time has come from experimentation. I'm just giving you my guidelines of what I generally try to do. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. This course is available in the Slate Digital All Access Pass, which gives you thousands of dollars worth of award-winning plugins, the industry's most game-changing synthesizer, Anna 2, 
and the very best masterclass production courses taught by the industry's biggest pros, all for $14.99 per month.